Pelicase Test 3. Uh, we are here in uh, this luxury swimming pool here in the heart of Berkshire to test uh, the Pelicase 1600 again. Uh, last time we uh, looked at uh, kind of its waterproof um, shock resistance by towing it behind a rib. Um, a lot of you wanted to know how it does on a proper waterproof test, so that's what we're going to do today. So we're here at this swimming pool and we are going to test to see whether or not it really does at least stand up to IP67, uh, which is 30 meters, no, 30 minutes, 30 minutes at one meter. Um, but of course we're broadcast show, so we're going to test it a little bit more than that. We're going to stick it at three meters uh, for an hour and see how well it does. Um, before that, we're going to test its buoyancy because we thought, how much weight is it going to take to actually sink this thing? Uh, so you'll see us, we're going to add some weights and let's just see how buoyant a Pelly case is. Uh, I think it's going to take quite a lot. Uh, to do this, we're shooting on our HPX 250 and it's over there. And uh, what we're going to use is uh, this little baby. Uh, we tried it before, but we didn't get much footage from it. So we're going to do it again, this test, to uh, hopefully give you a better idea how well it works. So this is the uh, WA Marine from uh, camerasunderwater.co.uk. Uh, and it's designed to fit that HPX uh, 250. And hopefully we'll get some great underwater shots with that camera. Uh, to back up the HPX 250, we've already set it going. Down there is our GoPro Hero 2. And we thought we'll test it because it's got the new wireless backpack on it. We thought we'd test to see how the remote triggering goes uh, through water. We know it works through air. Does it work through water? We shall find out. So we're going to get cracking and uh, let's first of all test the buoyancy of this lovely case. Well, obviously, when you uh, transport these cases, a lot of the time you're going to be taking them on an airplane. Now, obviously, there's a weight limit on that anyway. Um, so. I'm hoping it's going to stay buoyant at, you know, sort of about the 20, 25 Ks, which is roughly what you'd probably be able to lift anyway with one of these cases. Uh, we're going to push it a little bit more. But to start with, let's just step up. So we have, using my um, tying knot skills, a beautiful knot of some kind on this rope, and we're going to add some weight. So we're going to start off with, uh, I'm going to start off with 10 K. So we'll give that a go. So 10K, we're going in. And the case goes in. <laughs> 10K. Um, I won't let it sail off too much. As you can see, nice and buoyant. Uh, no problems there. Let's uh, add a little bit more weight. So here we go, this is 20K. So uh, 20K, and uh, this is a three meter pool. Uh, I can assure you the weights have not hit the bottom of the pool, and that is uh, floating quite happily. And uh, I'm gonna have to go and get some more weight. So 32K on there. Uh, in weights, I've got another 12K, so I'm just gonna put that on and see how we do. Uh, what's that gonna do, 44K? Here we go. Here we go, this is 44K. I'm gonna put the mic down in case I get pulled in. Well, I'd say that's over double your standard airport airline weight limit. Uh, still very buoyant. Um, we're now going to uh, think of something else we can put in this case to see if we can get it sink. Okay, in uh, what is the normal broadcast show style, <laughs> we run out of weight. So we're going to go non-scientific now and uh, use these pieces of rubble. Uh, filling the case and see how many pieces of rubble it takes until this thing will finally sink. Here we go. Uh, 
we will uh, endeavour to estimate the weight that is in this case at some point, if it sinks. Here we go. Um, okay, it's underwater, it has sunk, uh, the weights have hit the bottom, so uh, we have reached the limit of the buoyancy of this case. Um, in technical terms, it's a lot of weight required in order for it to uh, sink. Okay, the things I do for broadcast show. Here we go. We are going to take one more piece out and uh, got to be careful to make sure this doesn't just fall in because we left the weights in there. Okay. Uh, hmm. I'm going to go for the big piece at the bottom here. Here we go. Three pieces of concrete plus 42K. Here we go again. So it floats at that point there. Obviously, if something was distributed nicely inside, it'd probably float upright, but obviously it's everything we've got is tied onto the handle. So what we'll do is uh, we will take the three small pieces of concrete uh, back to the broadcast show offices and weigh them. And that will give us an idea of uh, the maximum weight this case can take before it starts to sink. Uh, now we're going to check to see how waterproof this thing really is. Like that. Okay. So, time, uh, well, one hour to go until we find out. In goes the case. Down it goes, um, one hour and counting. So you can uh, probably tell by the heavy breathing that we have now dragged this case out of the water. Uh, we've taken the weights off, but at the moment we haven't opened it. So uh, this is the moment of truth. This is one hour at about three meters in this swimming pool. So uh, here we go. I'm gonna try and open it carefully so we don't get too much splashes, but this is it. Well, I have to say, uh, that looks good. Box of tissues has been underwater for an hour. Perfect. All other tissues, other than, yep, a little bit of dust on from our gravel. All is good. There is uh, no condensation on the inside. All the tissues are dry. Everything. I mean, even the lip is dry. So, um, well, what can I say? I have to say that Pelly case has definitely won this challenge. Uh, certainly exceeds the standards that it meets, or says it meets, um, by a considerable margin. So, uh, I'll give this one to Pelly case. Well, the Pelly case uh, clearly won the uh, underwater challenge. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, we used the GoPro to film, uh, as you would have seen some of the footage, and we used it with the wireless backpack to see whether or not the wireless remote would work through water. Uh, and I have to say, it doesn't. Uh, no matter what, it cannot see the GoPro when you submerge it, and it's about a meter down under the water. Um, we'll probably send them a little email and see whether we're doing anything right or wrong. 
but uh, it works fine out of the water. But as soon as you put the GoPro in the water, we could not get the wireless remote to see the GoPro. So we had to do it manually. Uh, just a little tip if you're using a GoPro underwater with the wireless pack.